Lincoln Chapel, United Methodist Church. It is good to have you all here in the warmth and um, as we gather for worship this morning. It's a gift to have our Impact Youth Group here. If you don't know about Impact Youth Group, it is a community youth group uh, supported by us here at Wesley Chapel and by the folks at Matins Grove United Methodist Church. So we have kids here this morning leading us in worship from both places. Uh, there are kids that don't have a regular church home, but Impact Youth is their church home. And so it's a gift to have them join us and lead us in worship today. Before we begin, I want to just briefly read this thank you letter. It's good to have Julie back with us in worship today. And she wants everyone to know how dear all of us are to her and her family. The warmth of the hugs over the past week and have made John's passing so much easier to bear. The visits, the calls, the letters, the cards, the food, all the work to make his service beautiful. How could she ever thank us? Blessings to us all from Julie and her children, David, Sally, and Betsy. So Julie, it was a gift to serve your family in that way. We all feel that and we're glad you're here with us today. And not just Julie, we're glad we're all here in worship today. So would you stand in body or spirit as Alan leads us this morning in our call to worship? We gather, we gather today as your people, God. Young and old, rule followers and rule breakers, long hair, no hair, and everything in between. We gather today as your beloved. We are a people who are sensitive. Who are wilderness wanderers who trust in you. We gather today as children of the covenant. We offer this time of worship to you, O oh God. Please stand and sing in 450 CQ first. It's actually it's actually 405 in the hymnal. 405. That was my mistake, not theirs. Forsake me not, 
Forsake me not when my strength is spent. For my enemies speak concerning me. Those who watch for my life consult together, saying, God has forsaken him, pursued and seized him, for there is no deliverer. O God, be not far from me. O my God, Turkey and hammed out from the previous 
weekend because it was held on Sunday or Thanksgiving weekend. And our own Gavin Sales mentioned a low country bowl. And we had a few people that didn't eat seafood, so we had to do a little catering. But I think we had a good time that night and, you know, allowing all the families to be there and just kind of interact and mingle with the kids. The kids helped out with the Wheel of Sportsman night that's held here locally, and I know a lot of you all know what that is in this community. Um, and the kids realized that it was a lot more than hunting. It's, it's just fellowship with folks that, that don't get to get out much and don't get to experience the everyday task that most of us do on a daily basis. Then we had a Christmas meal, and that was kids only. We exchanged a few gifts. We let the kids decorate a Christmas tree at the house. And uh, they enjoyed that thoroughly. Uh, upcoming, we have um, Pfeiffer basketball game and tailgating event we've been invited to in February. We're all looking forward to that. We have a lock-in in March. Um, we may ask for volunteers from, from parents uh, to help out with that, to take shifts for that lock-in because it is an all-nighter. And there will be no sleeping. I've been told in the past. No one will sleep. I promise you. We also have a trip planned for the beginning of summer to a farm in South Carolina that's owned locally by Matt Beringer. Most of you probably know Matt. And the kids will fish, swim, um, anything in the outdoors. There's very little cell reception down there. And I love that because we're going to probably put up their phones in a box and you know, make, them, make them enjoy the outdoors. And don't worry, Matt will have the task. We'll probably stack firewood or there's no telling us what they'll be doing outside of ministering to each other. Um, just want to express our thanks um, from the entire youth to this congregation because without your love and support, we wouldn't be able to do this. And, you know, the, the reaching out to the kids that don't have a home church is probably one of the bigger parts of this. Uh, we continually encourage the kids to invite classmates or friends that don't have a church. And when we go to youth, we meet for two hours. We have a few minutes of free time when they come in. And then we share a meal together. And the meals are typically donated by folks from the community. Um, the kids have really enjoyed that. They've been not just eating pizza every two weeks. But then we'll play a game, we interact, because a lot of these kids don't go to school together, so they don't know each other outside of youth group. But it's nice to see them accept each other and and gather and you know get to learn one another in that free time. And then we'll have a lesson, and you'll see today that there's a few kids that are, that are going to speak, and there's a few that aren't, and that's fine. But I promise you, this is not the case of the youth. They all speak a lot, and that's fine. But recently we talked about <clears throat> everyone's gifts and hidden talents. And not everyone's made to get up speaking speak in front of folks. I'm pretty nervous right now myself, to be honest with you. But a lot of these kids, you know, they, they know that, that there's things they can do and, and things they can't, and that's fine. But once again, I want to thank you all for the love and support as we continue this walk alongside your kids and all the other kids in the group as they are on a journey to learn to be disciples of Jesus. And I hope that this group continues to grow. We've been averaging about 18 kids per meeting and pretty pleased with that. And I'm sure that it will continue to grow. Now I want to speak a little bit about the, the campaign I was talking about earlier, just to let everybody know, fill you in on what that is. Now, BAM stands for Baptist Aging Ministry, and that's for adults 65 and over. And for the last two years, we went to Camp BAM. Two years ago, it was in Thomasville at the Baptist Children's Home on site. And this year, it was in Kinston. So we were about 30 minutes away two years ago, but we're over three hours away this year. And they house us there on site. We are out on Thursday. They do some icebreaker activities. And we're there with other church groups as well. 
that, that we don't know. So we're we're mingling and intermingling amongst each other. And we have lessons and activities. And on Friday, we share breakfast. And then we go to job sites. Some job sites are building handicap accessible ramps, wheelchair ramps. Some job sites are landscaping or yard work for, for elders that they're not able to take care of their yard. Um, my daughter, Kendall, not very good with a hammer or saw. But she is very good at loving people. So she goes with a group that teaches these folks how to work their technology as they have smartphones and tablets. And sometimes that's their only communication with some of their family because they may not come and see them, but they can talk to them or FaceTime them. And so they give them a little rundown because we all know all these kids know how to work a phone. <clears throat> as well as planting flowers or painting. But I'm typically a leader and go on the wheelchair channel around job sites. And we have a leader, and all the leaders are former pastors. And some of these guys are up in their 70s and get out there and they work these kids pretty hard. And I way I work these kids, that's for certain. And uh, what, a, what a joy that is to complete a wheelchair around <clears throat> and have someone come down for the first time that hasn't been to their mailbox in over a year. You know, we take stuff like that for granted, and that is <clears throat> what an eye-opening thing that is. Um, but we couldn't we couldn't do that without your support as well from from this church. Uh, whether it's any kind of monetary donation, all the way down to the co homemade cookies that are sent, you know, that the kids enjoy. And then on the final day, we have a worship service, and then we have a cookout with the kids of the Baptist Children's Home. They typically have a gymnasium or something, so our kids are in there playing with those kids, and some of those kids don't have a lot of interaction outside of the kids that's in, within that community, so that's, that's pretty huge. And, um, and then that, um, on the final day, we typically do some work around the grounds. Uh, we've washed, pick, pressure washed picnic tables, things of that nature, around the children's home site. So that's pretty much what Camp Bam is in a nutshell. And it's, I, mean, I encourage you to, to talk to your kids, if they are amazed, to help participate in that because it is such an eye-opening event to go and, and minister and, and see the outcome. Of, a, of such a thing like that. That's pretty much I have about youth as a whole. I'm going to ask all the youth to come forward and I'm going to ask a few questions about their experiences from Camp Bam or their experiences with youth as a whole. I know we don't have very many kids that are with us today that did participate in Camp Bam. Um, Addison, would you like to speak at all about Camp Bam? The, she didn't get to go last year. She was working. But so the first year that you went, is there anything that, that you really got out of or what was your favorite part about going and participating? I went last year, and I was part of the group that did the wheelchair ramp. I was pretty nervous because I was one of the only girls, but the, most of the younger ones went and did all the technology stuff, but I went and we met everybody, we picked up the wood, we went to the site and we started building the wheelchair, the wheelchair ramp. Um, once we got finished, well they told us the whole story about the, the lady that lived there and she had been outside of her house in a very long time just because she wasn't able and things, she wasn't as fortunate as we are. And I take things for granted every single day. And I know that everyone does. But walking in and seeing her, she just lit up. Just with our presence. We went in there about three people at a time just because we didn't want it to be overwhelming. And we had blankets that were donated. And I looked behind her couch and she had 
ton of crosses that were just hung up. And I was kind of nervous to ask her, but I did ask her if she was a Christian. And she said yes. And we sat and had a very long talk, and she was just, she was such a sweet lady. And I've never, I don't think I've ever seen somebody so excited just to be able to go outside. So, the folks in the situation like we're talking about, a lot of times just get to the doctor's office and ambulance is about to come to their home. Just to back up to their front porch with and with help get them loaded up. So these wheelchair ramps are amazing to these folks. Um, and just to touch on last year we had another one that was kind of scheduled, but we didn't have the manpower. And Brandon Parker was down, um, he was helping me out on my on my team. And they, they kind of mentioned it to us. And like I said, Sunday we go to worship on Sunday after after breakfast. And so we talked on Saturday night. And it's like, you think we can, or actually Saturday night, so you think we can go over there and get started this evening. And then us guys skip worship tomorrow and knock us out. You know, it's going to be a long day, but it's like, I think we can do it. So we kind of combined two teams. And just the, just the older folks, the men, we allowed the children to stay in worship. And uh, we went and knocked that one out on Sunday that really wasn't supposed to get done that weekend. And, um, but that man, he, he was the same way. He, I mean, he, he was ecstatic. He couldn't get out of his house. Um, his yard was over knee high. And one of the leaders, um, Mr. Leonard, there was a guy going down, just down the street and uh, he said, I think I'm going to see if that guy will come out of this yard. And, you know, it was like, you know, we all got a little bit of cash in our pocket. I think we can get that took care of. So he ran down. The guy was loading up his long way and talked to him. And the guy said, I got one more to do, but I'll be back in about two hours. And he came back. And we all pulled money together. And we paid him to mow that yard that time and one more time uh, in the near future. And... And that guy couldn't even see his walkway. We couldn't see his walkway, um, you know. But that was just, it just worked out, you know. And God has a plan. He has a way of making things work out. Thank you, Addison. Kenley, would you like to say anything about uh, your experience with Camp Bam? Probably not. But, like I said, Kenley's gift is loving people. And, you know, I, I wasn't there. Jennifer was able to go to some of that. So, I'm sure that those people were excited just to get to see some kids and love some kids. Get Jennifer, you want to say something about it? I... So, I, um, two years ago, I went with the younger, they were in the middle school group, and I went with them to Camp Down. And I was there for about a month. It was about a month and a half. And it was like, wow, this is like a
they were going to have bag lunches, which was everybody. Bag lunches were easier. I took the kids to get barbecue because we were in Lexington, Lexington barbecue. And so, because <laughs> they were so good, um, I took them to a playground and let them eat their lunch and play for a little bit. Because they, I'm telling you, they did not stop the whole time. They were just talking to each person about their phones and their computers, and they were amazing. Um, second place we went was in a nursing home, and literally when we got in my car to head back to Camp Bam, they all were like, can we please come back and visit these people? Can we please come back and visit? Um, and so that in itself, you know, just spoke volumes. They were like, I want to be back. I want to be back here. So it's an amazing thing. Thank you. Right. Just talk a little bit more about that. You know, outside of the wheelchair ramps, um, NC BAM, the Baptist Aging Ministry, they have things as small as a, a hotline that these folks can just call in just to talk. So think about that. And I mean, there's so many things that that I would like to get these kids involved in here in our local community. Um, you know, without, and I know folks need help all across the board, but I feel like there's probably some things that we could do here locally to help them in our local churches. Um, I'm pretty sure that's it. You want to talk about that man's all game? But you got to do both. Yeah, you got to work on the wheelchair and ramp crews, and you got to minister to folks and help out with the technology. You want to say anything?
Martha and I were trying to clean off the tables, and here come a Chick-fil-A worker. She was an elderly lady, and she just we just started small talk as we were cleaning up. And she just asked what we were doing with that big crowd. So Martha and I began to explain to her where we were headed and what we were going to do. <clears throat> she immediately started crying. Her husband had passed away about a year prior. And about six months prior to that, they had a wheelchair built at their home so that he could get in and out of their home. And she said, those six months were the happiest I had seen him in years. It was because he could go and come as he pleased. And I mean, <clears throat> about to cry now, but Martha and I sat there and cried with that lady. And I mean, we hadn't even got there yet. You know, we were on our way to, you know, to go work in this ministry. And he's already talking to us and letting us know how big an impact something that small is on someone's life. So, all right, anybody else uh, want to say anything about what you've gotten out of youth, what you enjoy about youth, what you look forward to coming up?
I will pause and give you an opportunity to speak the names of those you want to share out loud. Let us pray. God of all ages, we do not understand the good, but most difficult is the suffering we see around us. As we are thankful for the undeserved good, we feel desperate. Desperate to act, to fix, to help. Help us to remember in every season, in every stage, you are with us. For those who need us to carry them in faith, we pray for those whose names we share now. For those whose names sit heavily on our hearts, we ask for the peace of your presence. Lead us as your people to share your comfort with those who need it most. And we thank you for the gift of, of accepting our burdens when we carry them to you in prayer. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer.
with the covenant. We are called to give faithfully of what you have, generously blessed us with. So giving God, it is our privilege to return a part of what we have been given to you. Thank you that this church used a part of these gifts to support impact. May all the work they do be pleasing unto you. Amen. Now, turn to your um, hymnals to page 402. Lord, I want